Hey guys, this is Lee here. I'm here at West Neck Harbor in Shelter Island. And in this video, I'm going to go over a few tips on how to win the world's longest sunfish race around Shelter Island. The world's longest sunfish race around Shelter Island is 50 years old. I'm gonna go over a few tips where you could have a successful race and enjoy yourself. If you're doing a long race, like the race around Shelter Island, it is literally a marathon. It's about 26 miles. The only sunfish race that's longer in continuity is the Oak Island race down in North Carolina. To do the round Shelter Island race, to win it, there's only one winner. There's going to be 60 to 70 boats on the race course. So it's almost like saying, how do you win the New York Marathon Run it. Tens of thousands of people sign up for the New York Marathon. And that's the same thing with the Round Shelter Island Race. You should do it because you want to do it and have fun. Two, one, blast off! Go Red Rocket! For the challenge of it, but for your own personal reasons. And if you do it that way, you've already won. The race is between four and six hours long. Todd Klingler, back in the day, he had perfect conditions, but he was reaching the whole way through. He has the world record and it's about three hours and 26 minutes. But most of the time, the race goes for over four hours and sometimes it even has a time limit set where John Condon won his last round shot on race, his fifth one. So here is step one. You do it and have fun and you already won. So that's a given. For the people who want to finish really high up in the standings, one of the first things you want to do is make sure your boat is in excellent condition. It doesn't have to be a new boat, but you have to want to make sure it will not break down. So check every fitting, every strap, main sheet block, hanger, everything. Because if something's going to happen, a four to six hour race with conditions that could range in a drifter to over 20 miles an hour. It's a lot of stress on the boat. Step number two, this is a navigational race. It has nothing really to do with boat handling, tactics. It's really get around the race course as fast as you can and pay attention to the geography of the island because there's a lot of undulations. If you follow every undulation, you're gonna be sailing a lot more distance than if you just go from point to point. It's really important to know where the currents are, but there usually is a shift in current during the race. So you wanna know if that's going in or it's going out. So if it's going in, it's going from east to west. And when the tides are going out, it's going from west to east. Look at a chart beforehand. Look at where the deep water is. Be careful of rocks. And it's not uncommon to be a half mile to a mile offshore and then one point you're sailing literally six inches from the beach. Be aware of that. And another thing you watch out for is they really make a big deal about it, but it's more for safety reasons rather than tactical reasons, is there's two sets of ferries. There's a North Ferry going from Shelter Island to Greenport. Stay away from the ferries. Don't go close to them. Anticipate what they're gonna do. They cannot move very easily. So when in doubt, go behind them and make your intentions known. And on the south, south side, there's the Shelter Island Ferry going to Sag Harbor, same thing. But one thing you can do with the ferries, if there's, and a lot of motorboat wakes, a lot of, if it's gonna be a nice day, there's gonna be a lot of motorboat chop. You play the motorboat wakes, try to surf them, and then you'll gain a couple of boat lengths on every wave if you can. If you're getting any value from this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Turn it blue. Really appreciate it. And, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Number three, keep yourself hydrated and have nutrition or food. Make sure you have more than enough drinks, Gatorades, waters, whatever, and maybe a power bar or two, or even a sandwich. I like to eat on the water even when I'm racing. That just keeps my energy levels up. It is a brutally long race if you have no water, no nutrition. It's actually kind of dangerous because then you'll start getting like, woozy and lightheaded. Step number four, how to do well in the race. You sail your own race. Don't worry about the first hour and a half of the race. Jim Kohler from the dinghy shop actually started five minutes or longer when uh, behind everyone else. 
and that was the year he won his one championship. So it can be done. I told Jamie Torres, he goes, Lee, give me some tips on this. I said, don't worry about the first hour and a half. That one time where he sailed it, he finished second. So you basically sail your own race, go for pressure, keep in the current when it's going with you, keep out of the current when it's going against you. Pay attention to who's won this race multiple times. We have John Condon, who's a five-time champion. We have John Eckert from Massapog. He's a five-time champion. Bobby Boger is gonna be down here. He's a three-time in a row champion. There's a lot of other people that won once. Bart Hale is one of them. It's a very difficult race to win. However, there's a lot of fast people at this race. Local knowledge is really key. The currents are a little bit goofy, especially around Greenport. So you really need to know what the currents are doing. Do you have to have local knowledge? No. You don't have to have local knowledge in your head. However, it helps that you beat the person with local knowledge. So pay attention to the forecast. If the winds are calling for two to five in the morning and then they're gonna blow up to 15 to 20, be prepared to adjust your sails. I've even adjusted my gooseneck adjuster from 15 to 18 when the wind's gotten really heavy. It only takes a few seconds to adjust it and in a big long race, it's better to have a balanced boat than an unbalanced boat and you feel like you have power, but then you're being overpowered. You do not wanna be overpowered in this race. You wanna have a lot of power, you wanna go fast, but don't be too macho and try to sail at 14 all the way around when it's blowing 20. So here's some hints for the people who are double handing. Make sure you like the person. That's a long race to be on a small boat. Also make, sh make sure you have fun. You're not out there to go ahead and, and set speed records. Be comfortable, put some sunscreen on, make sure you're not gonna get burnt, have enough to eat and drink, and just make a day of it and enjoy it. It's gonna be a big party afterwards, and they're gonna have some good raffles for a brand new sunfish and sunfish sales. So it's, it's really a lot of fun. It's something to do. Uh, on your bucket list, and this is gonna be promised to be something you'll never forget. So the most important part about doing successfully in the Round Shelter Island race is really to have fun. If you wanna to try to win it, finish in first place, then by all means, get everything set up, know your weather, your currents, have a boat in good condition, and just sail fast. Also pay attention to other people. However, to really win is to get off the water and just have a smile on your face. Enjoy the experience. That is really winning the Shelter Island Wraith. Has such a long history, 50 years. Joe Sullivan and some of his friends 50 years ago, 51 years ago, set out and said, hey, they were sitting in South Hold Yacht Club and said, why don't we sail around that with some sunfish? They thought they were crazy. First year they actually sailed and they didn't time the currents correctly and they actually didn't get around it. And so they said, well, let's do it again. They finally got around the island. It was an experience. And then 50 years later, the tradition continues. Thanks a lot to South Hold Yacht Club, Joe Sullivan, people that you just look up to because someone who's like 84, 86 years old can win this race and has just recently, Dick Heinel has, has bested 30, 40 boats. And thanks a lot to the race committees over the years who've put on this regatta, South Hall's done a great job. So if you ever want to come out and do this race, by all means, go ahead and do it. It's one thing to check off your bucket list and it's a lot of fun. Beautiful North Fork of Long Island, New York. Wineries everywhere, farms, and great sailing. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you get something out of this video. I'm gonna leave some links down below for some information. So if you haven't already, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and press that notification bell. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the water. So this race has an age limit to it, but it's an age limit to on the younger side. So if you're not turning 16 in the year you're gonna race, you're not allowed to race. But there's no age limit to winning this thing. We have Dick Heinel winning it at 84 years old. 84 years old. Can you imagine winning a marathon at 84 years old? That is incredible. He's a multiple time winner. Just to be able to sail well at 84, let alone win it, that is amazing. Joe Sullivan is a lot younger than Dick Heinel. 
he always jokes around, but Joe's sailed this thing every year for the past 51 years. So that's that's amazing. And I think Joe is saying that this 50 this 50th is going to be a swan song. So have a great race, Joe, and I wish you the best. And thanks a lot for all you've done for the Sunfish class, the Sunfish sailboat, and he was the New York Sunfish rep for a long time, and he did a great job. Thanks a lot for South Told Yacht Club. They have done a great job putting on this show. Oh, and I'm trying to like steer. 